In this video series, we're going to cover header design, header components, header fabrication, and header welding. Be sure to see all of the parts in this complete video series. A material we like to use for temporary fixturing is this C-channel. It's relatively inexpensive, readily available, and it's easy to use. We're going to use this channel to drill the flange pattern onto. You'll drill your first hole, drop your bolt in. Drill your second hole at the other end of the flange, put your bolt in, and use this transfer punch to mark the rest of the holes. That way there you drill the rest of the holes, but before you pull that flange off, you're going to want to trace the peripheral of the flange with a sharpie, plus the port holes. And the reason is, every one of these flanges pretty much out there, every model, has a unique position. You can flip it over and it could be off so subtly that you don't see it, but it'll be off just enough that you can build a header that won't be any good when it's done. Being off just a little bit on the port or the bolt holes will make a poor header. So keep it in mind that drawing that is extremely important. Okay, so the base plate is bolted to the flange. We're ready to make the fixture. Typically, we would make the fixture laying down using a piece of C-channel positioned for the standoffs for the clamp locations. One over here to also accommodate the collector location. But for this video, we're going to do it a little different. We're going to build a fixture vertical. It'll show up better in the video. You'll see the process a little better and be able to visualize it. So let's go ahead and weld at the base. Okay, so we have the PVC mock-up bolted to the fixture base. From here, we're going to use a unique process. It's very simple and inexpensive. We use muffler clamps to locate the strategic locations on the PVC mock-up for locating where the tubes are going to go. You're going to want to put them in the right places where you can pick up the bend radiuses where they need to be. From there, we'll put a tube in like this and another piece of square tubing in like this and we'll weld it into place. And they'll hold the, the clamps in position so we can start building the header in that location. Something else to keep in mind, and this question comes up quite a few times from people that call in, equal length. You can build an equal length header with a mock-up like this. As you can see in these video clips, we started off with an engine and a chassis mock-up sent to us by a customer. We mocked these up in shop using PVC and they came out equal length per customer specifications. So this process does lend itself well to equal lengths. It takes longer to build, but the end result, if you're looking for equal lengths, works great. Something else to keep in mind is if you're building a header that used a larger tube, say it's mocked up in PVC, inch and a half, schedule 40, the size of the tubing is 1.9 OD. If you're going to build a header and say a two and a half inch, you might use a spacer like this to go underneath the clamps. Another topic we need to cover is collector design. We're going to be using the slip-on collector that has a slight merge, then up to three inch in diameter. From there, it has a V-band flange welded to it and the O2 sensor bung already welded in it. As you can see, it lines up well with the mock-up collector. We're going to tack weld a piece of three inch scrap on to use it as a reference for the three inch diameter of the collector. Then we'll clamp it down here for location. One of the first things we have to mock up for is the collector. Since dimensionally the mock-up collector is slightly different than the actual collector, we took a clamp, split it in half, and welded it to this piece of square tubing. From there, we'll actually put it into the fixture to accommodate the collector. As you can see, all the clamps are in place, waiting for the standoff tubes to be welded into position. We have a couple of clamps that weren't put in because the U-bolts were in the way. The standoff will hold the clamp into place without the U-bolt. This one being located at number three at the top, and this one, number three, at a lower location. As you can see, the collector is also fastened into its permanent location. Notice the location of these clamps. They're in the straights. You can measure from center line of the clamp to the center line of the radius to pick up some dimensions that aid in fabrication. Something else to keep in mind is you're tacking up a fixture that is built using PVC. Your ground has to be followed through your tubes or your ground clamp has to be put on the one inch square tubing somewhere along the way. This particular one is grounded to the base fixture. We'll zip this one on right now. And that way there we've got a ground as we work our way up to the next clamp. We'll pick this one up right here. And up we go from there. From here we'll pick up our next ground. If the tube wouldn't connect from here to there, we come down with our other tube or put a ground clamp on there to pick up a ground from there. As you can see, 
The welding fixture is almost completed. With a few more items. These clamps have the PVC mock-up locked within the fixture. We're going to take a die grinder and nip these corners off and we should be able to get the mock-up out. Another item are these tight spots we talked about earlier. If we took a tube and we welded across here to identify those, we wouldn't be able to get the mock-up out. So we use a little apparatus like this. It's just a tube within a tube. It gets welded on like this and then the inner tube is pulled out so we can get the mock-up out of the fixture. Okay, you can see we have the fixturing tubes all in place. On this number one cylinder, pulls on out, gives easy access. You can see how it's gonna work out great for locating that tight spot. Number three cylinder, same thing. Comes right out, there's our tight spot, easy access. Number five cylinder, once again, works the same way. Easy access, it should pop right out of the fixture. We're pretty much done, except for one thing. We have to mark where these clamps are at in the fixture. You're going to reference these things 20 or 30 times during the build. Extremely important. Don't forget it. Okay, the welding fixture is done. We can take the PVC mock-up out and start building your set of headers. This is where the fun begins. We start with putting the flange into the fixture. Let's talk about flanges for just a moment. This is the flange we're going to use to build the header. It's a 386, 304 stainless laser cut flange. It's an ideal size for that big block Chevy. The port configuration is identical with an extra 65 thousandths added all the way around to accommodate the tube. It'll work great for our application. But what happens if your port is bigger than the flange? We have a solution to that. For demonstration purposes, we're going to use two flanges bolted together. One's going to represent the larger port of the head. The other one's going to represent the smaller port of the flange. You would blue the flange on the mating surface where it mates the head, go in with a 180 degree scratch all, scribe the port configuration into the flange, disassemble the flange off from the head, and die grind the flange out plus 65 thousandths to marry up the tube to the port in the head. This is the difference between a custom header and an off the shelf header. This is something you just can't buy, but when you build your own headers, it's a benefit that you get. Make sure you see us at stainlessheaders.com for all of your header component needs. We carry a complete line of header flanges, mandrel bends, merge collectors, and stainless header tubing.